Christmas, everybody! Welcome to the penultimate, ooh, penultimate episode of season two. Yes, of the Christmas countdown show. My name is Eric Peterson. I'm here with my good buddy Danny Jordan. We are joined by Chris Sisley that we're looking at through Zoom, and we got Emilio just sitting on the ground by still the still not using, still not using the pillow, just freezing. You know, freezing. maybe season. He, three. You know who he is. Who you know who he is? Who? Oh my gosh, I just realized it. He's Bob Cratchit. Oh my gosh, he, he is, is absolutely Bob our Bob Cratchit. He's cold. He doesn't have a comfortable seat. He's just sitting there. Oh, let me look Can I up get something. a little more cold. Can I get Mr. a little more cold? It's very cold in this studio, M- Mr. Derek and Mr. Danny. I, I'll try to look up your <laughs> your silly tangential ideas, but my fingers are frozen uh, solid. I wish we had a camera on Emilio right uh, now. He is turning, you know, the red of Santa's suit I love uh, at I this love point it. in time. But, but we love we you, are, Emilio. Danny. Yeah, we, we are, are. This is episode nineteen. Gosh, of twenty, of twenty, of season two of the Christmas Countdown Show. We did it. We, we've come so far. We've come so far. From our little tiny garages. Humble beginnings. To this little tiny cold room. To this room. little tiny studio <laughs> that is about a third the size of my garage. Yes. It is also so cold in here. It, But, you know, I kind of like it's that. It's kind of good. Yeah. It's A, cold is good for comedy. True. Um, Wait, is that, I don't know why I said true. I don't know if I knew that. This is true. true. Oh, is it true? Okay. People laugh more when they're cold because they, A, they literally, you subconsciously want your body to shake when okay. you're cold. So laughing keeps you warm. Also, if it's warm, you naturally are like, ah. You kind of like soak into your chair. Yeah. So that's why the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York is sort of notoriously and famously freezing cold. Really? Was because Letterman and Ed Sullivan and now Stephen Colbert can get better laughs from audiences if they're cold. And that's why if you ever go to a live taping of a sitcom, freezing cold in there. I have a joke. Yes, go for it. Uh, They should call him Stephen Colbert. That's pretty good. (laughs) Pretty good. Mini ding. Did you see it in my eyes when you like... No, I didn't. Okay, because I, <laughs> I wondered. Did not I was like, that you were going to go there. I was like, does Eric? Because you had this look on your face, like, oh, Danny's got oh, one. Oh, Jesus, he, he got another one. Because sometimes when you'll say something, you'll say like another twenty words afterwards. But, but my brain is so on, locked on in. The I'm joke like, that you're going to do. Don't forget the joke. Don't forget the joke. <laughs> um, you know, that's and that's funny. that's how you know I'm not a professional. Is that <laughs> I just I'm totally oblivious <laughs> to everything else that's happening. But that's interesting. I, I never thought about that. Maybe that's why you know our episodes for the last few weeks have been so funny. Because it's getting colder Because it is in colder here. and colder in here. And, it is yeah. nice for the mood. It feels a little wintry. It really does. Yeah, because, you know, it's if you're watching cheap. this, uh, this little fireplace doohickey that's next to us, uh, it is a heater. It is. But it's not on as a heater When currently. we record it. You because know. it's the, that, like... It's too loud. Maybe we should have added that to our sounds episode yeah. last time. And then we could have been like, it's my comforting sound. It's the sound of an electric... <laughs> fireplace and then we would have been warm and then we would have been fine uh, you know, but you said Emilio's like you know bob cratchit but he's sitting right next to the disc heater over there that like true. if anyone's warm in this but studio, he brought that from home no i brought it from oh, home. okay you and, said you brought it emilio i have one that danny actually gave me that is called whisper quiet but it Ooh. sounds like a freight train yeah, I was False out advertising. at Marshalls recently. Sure. You know, I've been doing a lot of Christmas shopping. A lot of press I, for Marshalls lately. I, I know like Marshalls. Uh, whoever is you know is the owner is it TJX? I think is the yeah because it's like TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshalls, and there's like one more. Ross maybe. No, it's um, it's like World outdoors, Market? outdoors, something outdoors, Ooh, great know. outdoors, outdoor living, outdoor. I don't know what it is. Somebody will look it up and they'll scream at me on DM. But I was at Marshall's the mm-hmm. other day, and I was when I got your mug actually, yes. and I was walking through an aisle. I wasn't. I'll, I'll be totally honest. I wasn't there looking for a heater for Emilio. Sure. But then I saw it on this like big display of just like random yeah doohickeys and those are my favorite displays they're the best i love a display of random crap yeah (laughs) and you're just like in your mind like who could i yes it's like this do i need these heated slippers or do i need this like everyman tool that has like a fishing pole attached to an axe (laughs) Uh, do i need this beer pong old timey kind of game all good all those are yeses all good you know what those are great for gift exchanges yes when you go to like a friend party or That's like a company a party idea. yeah when like the limit's 20 25 dollars yeah, yeah. that those little doohickey tables yeah are the way to go and speaking of i got emilio a little like plug-in heater because for some reason our landlord 
doesn't like to turn on the heater here in this in this space. But uh, anyway, that's a story for another time. So I had brought in my little disc floor thing sure. from home, and I was like, well, this isn't fair. I'm nice and toasty over here at my desk, and poor Bob Cratchit over there yeah. is uh, shivering, asking for a little more coal for the fire. So I got him I, this I literally can thing. only see Bob Cratchit now when I look at Amelia. We should just call him Cratchit. We're going to call you Cratchit. Let's just call him Cratchit. Emilio Cratchit. Let's call him Cratch. Hey, Cratch. Hey, Cratch. (laughs) What's up, Cratch? You cold? You working hard, Cratch? We should order him a shirt from our merch store because you can customize stuff. Yes. We should just call it the Cratch. The Cratch. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. I'm so sorry, Emilio. Oh, you went went one too far. You're you're great. We love you, Emilio. (laughs) You've brought so much to this uh, experience. We're we're grateful for that. Um, But speaking of Marshall's, Again, I got to bring it up. I love this. This is. I, I went the other day, yeah, specifically to go Christmas gift shopping. Mm. Uh, this did was, you have a list? Uh, I had you? an idea of things, okay. so I had you know played this game, and I don't know if you've done this with your kids or other parents out there might have done this. Is I will go to a store mm-hmm. not to get them gifts. I'll go for something else, but then I'll roll them around the store, oh, yeah. see what they respond Pro to. Move. See what they point out. Yes. And I'll be like, well, you know, Christmas is coming. We'll, we'll see what happens, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so yesterday, actually, uh, I had like an hour free yesterday morning. Yeah. And I was like, this is shopping time. Sure. So I went to Starbucks, got myself a little drink, went across the parking lot, got the big cart at Marshall's, not nice. like the little two tier, sure, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm just yeah. there for some socks and maybe yeah. like a towel cart. And I knew some things Emerson wanted. So I, but, I was immediately greeted by doohickey table. Yes. And the first one was like these themed like uh, pajama sets. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll, they'll have yeah. like elf. Sure. They Harry had a Christmas Potter vacation and, yeah. one. Ooh, fun. Yeah. And I was like, my dad, my yeah. dad would love that, but they didn't have a size. Mm. So I had to like go to the next level of gift for him. I bought a, a t-shirt for my dad as a gift, but I just returned it. I decided, really? I decided against it. And I know my dad listens to the podcast, so he's going to listen to this. I got him a t-shirt that said, now that's an RV. And it has the RV from yes. Christmas Vacation because my parents live part of the time on an RV. Oh, really? But I felt like it, the shirt was almost like being mean. Mm. Like it was like, now nah, that's an RV. And it like has kind of his like crappy His rv beat up one, yeah. and so i did i thought it would be fun when i bought it for my dad but then i was like i actually think that i don't want my dad to think that i'm like saying like look where you live you live in an rv yeah. you know and so i returned it oh, okay now he's gonna hear this and go i want that i shirt want it so bad <laughs> yeah. and then he'll know what he's getting for christmas that's right um but i i will say at the holiday season marshall's really blows it out with like the doohickey tables mm-hmm. like you might go you know in the you know, regular part of the year, and maybe there's like one little section that's sure. like the rando stuff. This time of year, it's all there's out. like boom over there. They got bikes, they got yeah. scooters, they got drum kits, they got acoustic guitars. I'm like, yeah. where did you get all this stuff? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how that happens, but I'm grateful for it. <laughs> Cause I was like, okay, well, I wasn't necessarily here for dad, but I saw something he really sure. would like. And so I was like, boom, he's done. Then I saw something for my brother, boom, he's done. Even though I was there for Emerson specifically, mm-hmm. and it was like all of a sudden I was in the zone, man. I love that. You know when you get in that shopping zone, yeah. And all of a sudden you're like something switches in your mind, and all of a sudden, like this creative world, you're like, oh my god, I know what everybody wants. <laughs> he, I only laugh because I am constantly in that zone. I, really? Because I less about getting gifts for other people, but like enjoying shopping mm. and being like, this is going to be. I can seeing where you're going to take these products that are in front of you and either give to other people or use in your life, I constantly live in that world. Maybe that's why I don't go shopping a lot. Mm. Because if I did, then I would just buy way too much yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. So maybe yeah. I, that's like my my sort of regulator that I put upon myself sure. is don't go shopping, which means I don't get a ton of new clothes. It's kind of like don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Exactly. Don't go shopping at stores if you're a gift or your love language is gift giving. Yes. Because you'll just yes. buy gifts for people all the time. This is true. Um, but I will say that I had the biggest cart that Marshalls will, will offer. Yeah. And by the end, Eric, I had Stacked like the, the lower brain. level was full of stuff. Yeah. It was so full on the top. Like I had Tetris all sure, these yeah. things in. You have to hold And it. I had my hand on yeah. top because I had this huge long it's box on top of everything. Yeah. And I tell you, man, while I was walking through that store, I felt like the king of the castle. <laughs> I thought everyone must be looking at me thinking, wow, look at that guy. 
he's getting he's some gifts right. for some people and he loves some people. Yeah. And then it dawned on me as I got up to the register, I was like, oh crap, I got to pull all this stuff out of this cart. Oh yeah. And then I got to find its way back, back in, in, but yeah. in bags now. Do you know what you do? do no, you know tell you me. Do? You bring a second empty cart. Ugh. So as opposed to you bring your cart up to the thing, but if you're full like that, you just bring a second empty cart and then you scan stuff and put it into there. It's like supermarket sweep. Mm-hmm. That's a brilliant move. I didn't do that. And so, and, and that at that Marshall specifically, and I feel like a lot of places do this now is they have like, if you go too far with this cart, oh, yeah, yeah. the little like locks boot down, yeah. locks. Yeah. And she was like, well, you could use the, the cart. And I said, isn't it going to lock when I, she goes, right. nah. And I was like, <laughs> She goes, you have to take it to the freeway to get it to lock. And I was like, okay, well, your signs outside really yeah. convinced me. Yeah. But I loaded that baby up and then I like got to my car. I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much stuff. I, I got to throw some stuff in the back seat. Sure, and yeah. then I got home last night and um, made sure Emerson and, and Riley were in the house so they didn't see me. And then I you know, took on that task of like strategically hiding stuff sure, yeah. in the garage and grabbing blankets and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And so I feel like it was a very successful trip and it really just as a, as a gift giving person, it really filled my heart. I love that. Yeah. Um, speaking of like pro moves, mm-hmm. I saw a pro move on TikTok this morning. Really? That is a good thing to tell people, especially on this episode when we're six days away from Christmas. Oh my gosh. People may be about to jump on planes like to fly to see family if you're not already there. This is so smart. Okay. So smart. And I never thought of this. This woman said, uh, if you're a family and you have young kids and you're getting on a plane, right? A lot, you get to go, you get to board early. Right. And she said, don't do that. What you do is you send the husband or one of somebody from the couple on by themselves with all the bags. Mm. You keep the kids out by the gate, running around, getting them snacks, run up and down the hallway, whatever. And then you you bring the kids on in the last group. Okay. So then the kids are not sitting on the plane for 45 minutes because what she was saying is she was like, you know, when the kids sit there for 45 minutes, they, she was saying how like, you know, kids feel stress around them. And when mm. people are boarding an airplane, it's always stressful. Yeah. It's just like there's bags over their heads. They're heavy. They can feel that people are anxious and a little angry. Right. And so she was like, when the kids feel that for 45 minutes while you're waiting to take off, the way they release that is once they're in the air, they're like, okay, well, I need to release this feeling of stress that was right. put upon me. So I was like, that is a brilliant move to send one person from the couple onto the plane Put totally, all the bags yeah. away, keep the kids out there running around. And then when they're like, all right, last boarding, kids jump on, boom, we take off 10 minutes later. Go. That's there. really smart. Yeah. I never Isn't that a good of, idea? That's a brilliant idea. I, yeah. I feel, you know, kind of, you know, bad for the person who has to carry all the stuff onto the, the yeah. plane. But, you know, that's what you do. That's what you do. Because you drop the stroller and all the things off, yeah. like right at the end yeah. of the jetway, and then you're really just dealing yeah. with the bags. I think yeah. that that is a pro move. Smart move. One I'd never thought of before yeah. in, in my life. Um, speaking of uh, pro moves, uh, we got a pro move from one of our fans of the show. Mm. Somebody, as we talked about in our last episode. Wait, is this the present? Yes. This, okay. Thank God. I've been waiting. I know you've been waiting with okay. bated breath. Yes. Uh, so somebody sent us a big, like a big box. It's a pretty big box. It's a sizable box. It, and it has all over it the words Merry Christmas yes. in green and red. And so to me, like, so when I went to the P.O. box, it was one of those situations where they, they dropped the key inside your P.O. Mm. box because like, what you big. got is too big. So like there's Always these bigger exciting. boxes. Always like, Ooh, exciting. what did yes. somebody send? And so I cracked open this, you know, satellite little box, as it were, and this big gift from our friend Lisa Simmons mm. from Texas was waiting for us. Texas. Texas. Let's um, see what Lisa sent to us from Texas. From Texas. And everything is bigger in Texas, as That's they right. say. Um, it's just one Christmas card. It's just card. one big box. <laughs> one big Christmas card. No, it feels like there's something There's some weight in to here. it? Okay. Yeah. And I know you and I have been waiting since our last episode yeah. to figure out what we were going to, what was going to be in here. A live unboxing on air. A live unboxing on air. Imagine it's a stack of cash. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be so nice. Can you, pull, can you imagine if that happened? You like, just opened the I was box like, Eric, and it was like $300,000. And you Eric, were just like, what? What in the world just oh, 
Okay. What just happened? Okay, thank, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Big Lisa. Shout out to Lisa out there in Texas. We're gonna send you a sticker. You yeah, know, a and a magnet. You. <laughs> magnet. Yeah. Thank you for that three hundred thousand dollars. All right. Uh, it's okay. not. I don't know if it's three hundred k. Okay. Uh, That's right. If it is, it's obscured I like by the a newspaper. Inside of the box has. Uh, s- uh, snowflakes on it. Yeah, so the outside that. has Merry Christmas and the inside has snowflakes. snowflakes. Love that. All right. All so right, we got we some got? newspaper. Okay. I'm just going to throw that away. Throw that. Um, all right. Here we go. I'm still peeling away, peeling away. Pa- there's a lot of newspaper in here. Oh, my God. There's a lot of stuff in here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, there's a card. Do you want to do the card? Yeah, I'll start with all the right, card. There you go. All right. Here we go. Uh, Eric, Danny, and crew. Love that. You guys have brought so much joy to me this past year as I listened all the way across the world in Kenya. Oh, yes. This, this is, is our, our friend from Kenya. Janelle. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I wanted to send you some authentic Kenyan items. What? The two green notebooks are from a local artist, Eragati, and those are for you too. Uh, the two pouches are for Lisa and Lynn. Aw. They're from a collective that employs Kenyan women, mostly single moms. Mm. You can even see the name of the ladies who made them. Oh, my gosh. The elephant and giraffe notebooks are for Sophie and Miles. Aw. Preteens, teenagers are hard to buy for. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so I hope they like them. They're from another local artist, Kulula. Kulula. The book is for Emerson, and the giraffe is for Riley. The oh giraffe was gosh. made by a local center who works with street children. Lastly, I included some ornaments for your tree that I bought at a market in Nairobi. Hope you enjoy everything. Hope you have the holliest, jolliest, most wonderful Christmas season. Love, Janelle at Janelle Simmons. Oh, my that gosh. That is so Janelle. thoughtful and kind. I'm going to uh, write some so cool. very introspective thoughts. Some poems? Some poems in here. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's where I'll start writing my third book. There you go. Dude, these, beautiful these ornaments, ornaments. Are, they, they're, they're heavy. Like heavy and individually beaded. Yeah. Very pretty. Ooh, and then cool. uh, maybe we'll put the red bell up here. Sure, yeah. I kind of like that. Or Oh, I can hang. I've ne- have you ever hung an ornament off garland? Uh, No. Neither have I. There you go. Hey, that should be a new trend. This, one, this is great. All right. Uh, so we're going to hang these on our trees. Go. These are absolutely stunning these are, honestly this is one of the coolest ornaments i have ever seen i'm trying to get it on my tree oh i don't like the spot of mine because it's gonna hide behind my head well we could always readjust afterwards oh my gosh that's beautiful janelle thank you so thank you so much so, much. so thoughtful uh, and to i can't think of to, our families yeah right amazing a little something for everybody so a huge shout amazing. out to uh to janelle well uh, worth the anticipation of opening that right i like that it became like its own thing yeah in its own episode from kenya again who would have thought <laughs> right halfway around the world halfway around the world amazing. that someone in kenya found us and then thought to give us all these like authentic kenyan goodies from amazing. local artisans I absolutely just, amazing i love that so much uh and while we're chatting about our listeners i i think we should read just a couple listener reviews sure, real sure. quick here just because we're getting towards the end of the season and i want to make sure that nobody's left out yes. you know we, we do our best to make sure that we talk to everybody that we get everybody get everyone in yeah because we're just in, yeah. so grateful for you guys and a lot of reviews have been coming in lately i think maybe it's because um people sense that maybe it's the yeah, end yeah uh so i'll We'll start with this one. Be careful about the username on this one. Yep. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Okay. It's uh, the title is it's so nice to celebrate Christmas with these guys. guys? That's the holidays. Um, And it's from swagger dot dot dot. Uh, (laughs) Okay. And they said, I only recently began listening to any podcasts in general. I did a search for Christmas and found this gem. Mm. I got up to speed quickly on past episodes, and now I wait anxiously for each new one like a kid at Christmas. Aww. LOL, you guys rock. Thank you so much for giving people like me who celebrate Christmas from July on a safe place to love Christmas without shame. That is true. There's there's no shame here. No we, shame. You are amongst like-minded people who uh, celebrate Christmas year year round. I love it. So thank you for that review. Yeah, shout out to Swagger, Swagger B, Swagger B, Swagger B. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you. This is a brand new one. Mm. I did. I just seen this right now. Okay, this is funny mm. because this person gave us three stars. <laughs> mm. That's our first like middle of the road 
Well, we had we had the, what? What's his name? One star. No, or, that was oh, he, that was three stars. He gave us three too. He just was like, you know, but he couldn't. Get they past. mean well. Yeah. By the way, our theme this week is top five Christmas memories with our families. That's true. Um, we didn't say that. And if he was listening, I felt like we should just give him a little bone. A little, throw him a bone. Yeah, Maybe a he came bone. back. Maybe. Maybe he hate listens now. <laughs> Um, so this is interesting because this person rated us three stars, but okay. the opening line, and this is from someone named Cat Fan, 2011, mm-hmm. heart meow meow, like little cats. Sure, yeah. And the title of this review is, hi. Hi. And the review is, I just discovered this podcast and I love it. Exclamation, like five exclamation Here's points. my guess. She was going to do five <laughs> stars and you kind of like drag yeah. it across, but she was just so excited. She got to the third star and then was like, ah! Gosh, I love it. That's that's what I'm going to assume happened. Right. Um, or I guess maybe on a scale of like one to five, I love it is three. Sure. Five. It's sort of like when you go to Cold Stones, you know, yeah, like yeah. it, love it, gotta have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May work, gotta have it. Sure. would be five stars. Sure. Anyway. So now we got another kitty cat emoji. My name is Callie, and I would love a shout out. Hey, Callie. Hi, Callie. How are you? Adjust your review. Make it five stars. Come yeah, exactly. On. She goes, I love Harry Potter. Nice. And my Harry favorite Polter? character is Hermione. Yes. Who's yours? Mm, from Harry Potter? Yeah. I would say I like the character of Sirius Black. Yeah. I also like the character, even though he's kind of a bad guy, that um, uh, what's-his-face played? Uh, Alan Rickman? No. Boy. Kenneth Branagh. He was like the guy who was famous for... Uh, oh, against Gilderoy the Lockhart? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I liked his character because he was so full of himself. and that He was sort very of funny. Had a very funny fall from grace. Yeah. Yeah. I think depending on if we're talking books or movies, you mm-hmm. know, because in the books, like you're sort of creating who sure. these characters are, the way that they look, the way that they interact, their personality. I mean, serious... You know, it was that relationship that Harry builds with him. Like, you just feel so attached. Yeah. To don't serious. tell me too much because I've only seen the th- first three movies. Oh, I was just going to say and something don't, about please number don't. five. Please okay. don't. Please don't. Please I, don't. Okay, I will not. Uh, but I love <laughs> Sirius. He's he's great. You know, Hermione's fantastic as well. Great character. I just love, like, she's so smart, but she's so patient, but she's also so strong willed. And I love that yeah. about her that, you know, against these, like, Two guys who are like best friends that she's always sort of like the voice of reason. Yeah. I, I love that about Hermione as well. So um, thank you, Cat Fan, for that. And then she says at the end, and Merry Christmas. Nice. Merry Christmas. That's a three star review, folks. There uh, right there. Um, maybe we should do two more. Uh, yeah, two more. Right. This, this one's good. All right, here we go. They give us five stars. <laughs> uh, this is from, uh, it says one star, oops. <laughs> and now they have five stars. Uh, it's from AMB Disappointed. And they mm. say, I have no idea if I accidentally rated this podcast one star or not, as I was trying to see comments on who could possibly rate this podcast just one star, (laughs) when clearly they deserve the five golden stars. Yeah. My 11-year-old daughter and I love listening to this podcast together, and I love having a family-friendly podcast to share with her as we are in the car. A lot traveling to and from activities. Mm. I can only listen to it with her. So if we get to our destination in the middle of a countdown, I can't listen to the rest of it without her, but have to wait until our next car ride together. Family memories in the making, sharing this podcast with my preteen, which you know can be such a fun age. (laughs) (laughs) That is so sweet. And you know... It is. Uh, it's important to us to sort of do something that's family friendly and that you can listen to this um, in the car with your kids. And, totally. And we want to make sure that you can, you know, indoctrinate your kids and brainwash them into loving Christmas year round, like we do. Totally. So, <laughs> totally it's important yeah. to us to make a, a family friendly podcast. So thank you very much for that review. Isn't and that cool? Hello to you and your daughter. That like a mom and their child are like bonding. Over what we're saying. Over, over our show. And Amazing. and that brings us to our last uh, message okay. of this episode. And this comes from someone who just actually joined our Patreon, mm. you know, who gets access to that private community on Facebook, sure. which is the most massively merry corner of the internet. If you're interested in being a part of that, just scroll down in the episode notes. There's a link there. You can join up. You'll get exclusive access to Eric and myself on yes. that group and uh, access to bonus episodes that are only available to subscribers yeah. uh, to the show. Um, but this came from Meg. Okay. And Meg says, hi, Danny and Eric. My name is Meg, and I've been listening to your podcast since the beginning of season one. And when I discovered you, I believe believe you only had three episodes out and less than 1,000 followers on Instagram. (laughs) I had never searched for a Christmas podcast before, but I decided to one day, and I think it's fate that I searched it up when you guys had only just started. 
I can't explain how grateful I am for your podcast because it has helped cheer me up no matter the time of year. I'm beyond obsessed with Christmas, so hearing you guys talk about your love for the holiday season brings me so much joy. It has also created a new tradition with my mom because now, whenever we have the time, we will do our own top 10 lists (laughs) and then call and present our lists to each other. Oh, that's great. I'm off at college right now and I can't be home to celebrate every second of the holiday season, so calling to compare lists uh, compare lists has been really great. Thank you so much for always putting a smile on my face and I hope you two have a massively Merry Christmas. Um, and I do want to go on to say that uh, we did message her back mm-hmm. and she responded by saying, ah, <laughs> thank you so much. That message made me tear up. I love you both so much and love the community you've created. I will definitely be passing this on to my mom and she will freak out. <laughs> um, and so we want to give a shout out to Meg and then her mom. Meg and her mom, and yeah. And her mom's name is Cindy. Meg and Cindy. So hi, Cindy. Merry hi, Christmas. Meg. Thank you so much for listening. Yes. And please send us your list because we want to see what you guys are making your top totally. 10 list because we love to compare. Yeah. It's a good conversation starter. But 100%. Meg and Cindy, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for listening. We we love you. We support you. And we're so glad that you're supporting us as well. Doesn't Meg and Cindy sound like maybe like a, a sitcom? Meg like and a, Cindy. Like a mother and daughter yeah. and sort of like they're living in the city and yeah. trying to figure out how they coexist sure, with yeah. each other, like series of events. Small apartment. Mom yeah. had to move in yeah. with her, and now she's like, I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. You got to pitch it. I do, okay. You just uh, pitched it did right Did I now. pitch it? Okay, so whatever network executive is listening right <laughs> now, uh, hit me up. We'll talk. Um, all right, this is good. I am going to transition us to something that we were going to maybe do last week, but we're going to do this week. I'm in. This is a fun new game called Overrated, Underrated, perfectly rated hmm. we did not come up with this we saw it on the internet other people were doing it oh, about I thought, other I thought issues you did come up with no, it. <laughs> no, no no i stole it from the internet okay um but basically chris is going to give us different topics of christmas and we are going to say whether it is an overrated thing an underrated thing or if it's perfectly rated okay so uh chris why don't you uh, start us off let's start easy with real trees real trees i would say nowadays mm-hmm. underrated yeah because do you know that eighty percent of American households have a fake tree? Did you learn this from Spirited? No, I oh, read it. I read it uh, on the internet. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's kind of a bummer. I was shocked by that number. I thought it would be more like sixty forty, but yeah. it's eighty twenty. Did you know that ninety three percent of statistics are made up on the spot? <laughs> this one was not. I did <laughs> read this. I promise you. Um, I would say that uh, real trees are. Between underrated and perfectly rated. Oh, because okay. I think that pe- no one dislikes them. Like, it's, they're not overrated. It's not like people are like, oh, God, real trees. Ugh, can we right. stop with the real trees? <laughs> you know, I think that people either love them or they're underrated. So I'm going to go underrated. You're going underrated. underrated yeah, yeah. I, I would say nowadays, I think they're underrated. I think because, like you, that, that stat you shared, so many people are growing up never even knowing. I know. A real tree yeah. in the house. But also, can I just say, we went to get a tree the other day. Okay. This was a few weeks ago. And we went to a fun, cute little like Christmas tree lot, right? That's okay. like, I don't want to say the name because I don't want to bash on them. But like, do you mean like fun and cute as if it's like really like small and quaint or mm, it's like thematic and has like activities? Small and, and quaint. Okay. You know, I mean, not like tiny, tiny. It was in a, a parking lot, okay. but it was like a, a place that was like, you know, uh, so-and-so and sons and they like put them mm. out, right? A Christmas tree there, a six-foot tr- Christmas tree there was like $290. What? Are you kidding me? And I was like, golly that's just so much money to spend on something that's gonna die like or is already dead you know wait like that's real yes that- it was so expensive oh my gosh. and so it was like i wanted to have that experience of like going to the christmas tree farm and like getting the cute yeah. little and get some hot chocolate but the trees were so expensive that we wow. went over to home depot and then got one from home depot for like 90 bucks it was still 90 bucks yeah oh yeah i mean it's been i think the last time we had a real tree was the first apartment that my wife and i lived in together yeah which was nine years ago and we bought it i think from home depot or maybe we did two years in a row uh yeah so but it was like 65 dollars. yeah and it i mean it wasn't massive it's probably like six six and a half feet yeah so maybe costco is the way to go now because what are their trees running these days i don't know know? i'm not sure oh my gosh sure but yeah to get back to the game (laughs) 
<laughs> Real trees underrated. That's underrated. Our underrated and overpriced. Underrated and overpriced. Very good. <laughs> All right, what you got next for us, Chris? Here's the next one. Mariah Carey. Oh, this overrated. is a good one. I'm just coming out and saying it. You're going overrated? Yeah, I'm going overrated. Yeah. I think I agree. Yeah. I think I agree. There's p- also something to the fact, and I, I think I've talked about this. Well, I did talk about it, about the parade. I don't, it doesn't bother me that she can't sing that song anymore. Mm. It really doesn't. But I wish she would stop like being on Christmas shows mm. and pretending to sing it. Right. I just feel like play it. I'm not, I, I don't dislike the song, but to like trot her out every Christmas and know that she's just lip syncing. And I hate to be like a Scrooge about it, but it's just like, I'd rather you just play the music yeah. and do a dance or something. And you can have her picture up and say, Mariah Carey, the queen of Christmas, whatever. But it's, there's something about the like falsity of every Christmas, her coming out and just lip syncing. Do you feel the same way? Like, I feel like if there was a point in time where maybe Darlene Love, they were doing the same thing with she her. She always sang hers, though. Oh, okay. Because it was a uh, classic. She would go on David Letterman every Christmas right. and sing it, but she sounded good still. Hmm. And Mariah Carey is one of the greatest vocalists of all time. So I'm right. not like poo pooing on her as a talent. I think she would admit that her pipes are not what they were in her 20s. Yeah. And I, yeah, so I'm going to go overrated too. Okay. Overrated. Yeah. You know, I will say, even though I immediately jumped and said overrated, yeah. I was listening to Sirius XM, you know, because love listening to all the Christmas music. Sure. And, and she came on and she was talking about like um, Christmas movies and sure. like how she watches the classics still to this day. Yeah. And then she brought up like Elf and like hearing her talk about the holiday, it didn't feel contrived at all. It yes. felt very authentic, and I was like, am I too hard uh, on Mariah? Yeah. I don't know. Here's the thing. I think that she, I think she's a good ambassador for Christmas. I okay. think that she truly loves it. I don't think that she, you know, claims to be the queen of Christmas because for selfish reasons. I think she loves the season. I think she gets a kick. She always posts memes on, like, October 31st yep. at midnight of, like, here we go, folks. It's starting, you know. So I, I think that she is well-intentioned and that she's trying to put good into the world. Mm. And maybe I shouldn't have poo-pooed so much on her. Listening. I mean, I immediately jumped yeah. on it. I said under or overrated, overrated. immediately out yeah. of the gates. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's perfectly rated because... Perfectly rated would suggest that like there's people who are obsessed with her. Yes, yeah, and you're there's right. people who maybe aren't into her. So like when you balance that out, yin and yang the of mean, life. Yeah, maybe she's just perfectly rated for who she is and the style of song and yeah. the energy that it. I love it. I'm switching. I'm going perfectly. All right, rated. perfectly. Yeah. All right. What's next, Chris? Next one is the big man himself, Santa Claus. Oh, <sighs> underrated. Ooh, underrated. Underrated. Okay. I think you. We cannot pour enough love onto Santa. Mm. Because I think that, as we saw when we talked to San J. Claus the other day, yeah. the spirit of Santa is so good and so the like best part of the world, yeah. not just at Christmas time, but like this idea of loving one another, giving to one another, slowing down and appreciating the good things around you. Like that should be the core of every person in every country yeah. all the time. Um, so I, I would say underrated. I I feel like, hmm, this is a tough one. Mm. He's definitely not overrated. No. In my opinion. Maybe it's perfectly... Definitely re- underrated in regards to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade when they only gave him two I know, seconds of airtime. They gave him no time. They gave him no time. Um, maybe Santa is perfectly rated based off of every individual family's feelings about the essence and spirit of Santa and sure. Santa's role... In, in the holiday sure. season. That's fair. You know, I, I like to think of, you know, not everyone like is super into Santa and like got to get the picture and all those sorts yeah. of things, but some people really are. They love the tradition of it. Yeah. So maybe, you know, much like Mariah, like it's whatever Santa is to you, he's perfectly rated for you. In, for you. Yeah. I like that. Anyway. That's fair. I'm being very PC right now. That's all right. Whoa. Whoa. Did you see the lights? Was just that flickering? because you went like this? I don't know. Maybe it was Santa being like, <laughs> I am, I am underrated. underrated. Dude, I didn't tell you. Eric, speaking of Santa and like weird yeah. universal things. So, you know, we just had Santa J. Claus yeah. on the show, which was a blast. And if you haven't listened to that episode, do yourself a favor, That's listen great. to it, watch yeah. the videos on our socials. But 
I was creating like the hero graphic mm-hmm. for that episode to go on our social media. And I had this great picture of, of Santa and like this text around it and I exported it. And then I went to open it and the text was all there, mm-hmm. but the picture was gone. And I was like, wait, that was weird. So I went back to like the, like, you know, I do it in Adobe. Yeah. I was like, oh, there it is. I'll just export it again. Yeah. Open it up. No Santa. No Santa. And Emilio is sitting next to me. I go, Emilio, this is weird, man. I said, look at, look at my screen right now. Yeah. There's the picture. Yep. He is there. I just exported this. Where is he? Did you not open the layer? No, there was no layer. Oh, it was wow. just, it was the, the PNG export. Wow. I was like, what Santa is does happening? Santa not want to be found. No That's photo exactly evidence. That's exactly how I felt. I like that. And then, I don't know, maybe it was a glitch on my computer, because eventually... Let's say it's a magic miracle. It was a magic miracle. He was like, I want to see your commitment yes. to, to sharing I like that. my essence with the world. Like but that. it was very trippy. That's and I looked at, I mean, I was like, we talked to Santa. We really <laughs> talked to Santa Claus. We like, had communication. It was him. Uh, anyway, tell me All more right, do Chris, we have Why don't you give us one more? Candy canes. Candy canes. I have a very specific feeling about this. You go first. You want me to go first? Yeah. I mean, overrated. Overrated. Oh my gosh! I here's the thing. I candy canes. I first of all, I don't like the wrapping that they come in. Sure, it's way too tight. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that really tight. Like it's not even. Is it cellophane? Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's the thick. It's so thick. Super thick. Yeah. And like you, you gotta like go find it, yeah. and like you know, it's so fragile because it's skinny, and then sure. it breaks, and then inevitably, candy canes get all over the place. Like it, oh, it you get sticky on your face, it gets sticky on your yeah. hands. Also. Like, if I want peppermint, I'll just make myself some tea. Sure. You know? Some nice Hallmark tea. All, all day long. <laughs> Cinnamon cardamom. <laughs> I'm all about that Hallmark tea all day long. Uh, yeah. I. You know what I will say what is underrated when it comes to candy canes is the fruity flavored ones. Ooh, I don't like those. Oh, really? No. I know what you're talking about. They They're get, like, like purple Disneyland. and green and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those ones. Yeah. I can't get behind you on that one. Okay. But I'm going to say... Candy canes are perfectly rated. Really? Because I okay. think that they are... I like that we don't do candy canes year-round. I like the candy canes mm. just come out at the holidays. We all can have a candy cane or two. And then candy canes say, okay, back into the shed until <laughs> next December. So I'm going to go perfectly rated on oh, candy canes. Yeah. I, I hear everything you're saying, but can sticky everywhere, hard to open. But I do love the taste of it. I love the taste of it in a hot chocolate. Mm. I love the taste of like peppermint bark, which to me feels similar to candy canes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go perfectly rated. Would you say that peppermint bark contains candy canes that have been yeeted? Yes. Yeah. Yeeted to the ground. Yeeted to the ground. Definitely. Just with no regard whatsoever. <laughs> I, I think that's maybe the one place I will accept candy canes is smashed up smashed in up like and Christmas some, crack or, yeah, yeah. you know, peppermint bark or whatever it might like be. It. But in its whole form, it's, it's natural essence. Sure. Yeah, not, not here for sure. it, as the kids say. That was a fun game. That was a good game. I like that game. I like it. Um, we should get to the, our, our countdown, though. Uh, I would love to do that. But before we do that, I want to chat about something I just found out about recently. Um, So, you know, we've been talking all about Hallmark Channel's, you know, incredible Countdown to Christmas movie lineup. Well, at this point in time, all the new movies have aired, you know, but the good news is they're still airing 24 hours a day, you know, throughout the holiday season. But, you know, Hallmark Channel is not just known for holiday movies. True. They have this new series coming oh, out. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Do you? Did yes. you see it? Uh, well, I've seen the previews for it. It sounds really, really cool. The Way Home? The Way Home. Yes. Exactly. Like it It almost feels like it's got a little bit of, uh, we were talking about this off air, Outlander. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 when I started watching Outlander, I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this, but then I got hooked. Yeah. This idea of time travel time and, travel and, and meeting your like ancestors, your ancestors, yeah. like in the time that they were living that, so you're not only like seeing them as younger people, but you're experiencing the world yes. in a different way. And that's really intriguing to me. And yeah. I'm excited to see what Hallmark Channel is going to do with this series. I think it's going to be great. It looks like it's shot in a really cool way. Yeah. Andy McDowell's in it. She's an amazing talent. Can't go wrong, yeah. Um, and it's a series. It's like a new show. Right. So I'm I'm super excited to check it out. I'm always looking for a new series Absolutely. to watch, you know, totally. especially because I feel like I'm caught up on like my go-tos. Sure. And now that I'm like totally in Hallmark Channel It's going to be perfect for like that January l- malaise when you're like, mm. oh man, Christmas is over, but I want something good and heartwarming still. Yeah. Check out The Way Home. And it's cold and yeah. you're just hanging out indoors. It's getting dark early. 
you're going to be sitting on your couch anyway. Might as well watch it. Put on The Way Home. I'm really, really, really really stoked to watch it. And again, uh, so many, so many great movies. Uh, You know, Hanukkah on Rye um, is a great one that I think you guys should check out as well. I know we talked about it a bit in our last episode. I mean, for me personally, I'm jacked about that film just because of my connection, you know, to the celebration of Hanukkah with my stepdad. I mean, I have a menorah. Sure. At home, nice. Uh, that was gifted to me by my parents years ago. Like I, they're like little baseball bats <laughs> that the candles <laughs> sit cool. in, yeah. and and I will say we started doing uh, the lighting of the menorah last year and like my daughter emerson she was just like she thought it was like the coolest thing oh, watching especially when you get to like the eighth night yeah and you got like eight candles there and yeah. just like uh, there's something very soothing we've talked about this with fire before about yeah. like seeing the menorah up on the mantle and just watching as the candles just sort of get lower and lower yeah. and then eventually one of you know one of the times sort of sort of go out so i you know would you know maybe you don't know a ton about the Hanukkah holiday and and the tradition of it and you know I look bet, it up yeah this, it's important to know other cultures yeah. and other uh, celebrations and and support everybody and maybe this uh, movie is a great opportunity to learn totally more about Hanukkah Definitely. so Hallmark Channel they're doing it right they've done it right all season long filling us with all the festive feels from yeah. Christmas to now Hanukkah and then we got the way home coming early next year so thank you Hallmark Channel we love you thank you so much all right now should we go to our countdown I would love to okay so. Let's hear the music first, and then I'll tell you what it is. All right. This is top five Christmas memories mm. with your family. I, uh, uh, I like good. how we both just looked at each other like, are we ready to open up this can? <sighs> yeah. Because I, Eric and I were texting last night, and um, I said, tomorrow is going to be an emotional one. Yeah. For sure. Because as I was sort of racking my brain through... Just big memories, little memories. Um, I was getting very emotional. Yeah. And, and people who know us, know the show, know we that like to we, cry. we don't shy away no. uh, from shedding a few tears. Yeah. So buckle up. Here um, we go. Here we go. All right. Uh, for number five for me is going to be the... I wrote it as Christmas of Elf, meaning mm. the year... I guess it would have been 2000 and. 14 or 15 Mm. uh, that I played Buddy the Elf at Madison Square Garden. And there was something about that particular Christmas that it would have been 2015 because my son was born in January of 2015. Mm. So yeah, 2015. It was like, A, it was the first Christmas of our whole family because Miles was now born. And like, while I treasure the Christmases before he was born. There's something about like from that point on that now we're like, this is our family. This mm. is the family unit. Everybody's here. Now let's go forth in into the world, you know? Yeah. So there's something about that being really special. There was the fact that we were living in this just cute little apartment uh, right in Midtown across from Worldwide Plaza. Mm. So that felt very New York, which was great. I was doing a show at Madison Square Garden <laughs> And it was a show about Christmas, and I loved doing that show. And my kids got to come to the theater, and you know, there's we have this great story about Miles, our good friends uh, Michael and Damon, who are Miles's godfathers. Um, they watched him while I performed, so mm. that Lisa could sit in the audience. Cool. And they literally put him into a laundry basket because they didn't know <laughs> they were like a little unfamiliar with kids, and he right. just like sat there in the laundry basket for like the two hours while uh, I did the show. But that same time, you know, Sophie got to like sit in the wings and watch me perform, mm. and it just was a great Christmas. There was something about it that just felt just right in the pocket. Yeah. You know, it was just everything was just right. And maybe it was the fact that we, because we were visiting, because we lived in LA at the time, so we were just visiting New York, that felt like we didn't have all the extra stuff. Mm. We just had like a tree that we got, the gifts that we gave each other. We didn't have as many decorations. And while I love the decorations, there was something about the stripping away of all that, that it was just like me with my family. So number Mm. five is going to be the Christmas of Elf. Oh my gosh. Oh. I, I ignored it. I'm getting emotional already. Anyway, <laughs> um, so number five for me, I don't know what year this was. I know that I was a child. I know that I was a pretty young child. I would guess probably around seven years old, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just have this memory, and I and I can remember this happening a couple of years. But my my mom's dad, uh, my grandfather 
who I wasn't super close with, but he would host Christmas morning from time to time. And his name was uh, Zeke. Mm -hmm. He legally changed his name from Rod to Zeke. Or he changed his middle name to Zeke. Uh, And he was like an actor. You know, we would vote on his headshots at like holiday (laughs) gatherings. He would bring like 40 options and everyone would have to like vote on Grandpa's new headshot. Um, But there's this one Christmas I remember he had at his house off of his living room I don't know if it would be considered a den or if it was like an add-on where like more of the patio used to be, but like they turned it into like a room sort Mm -hmm. of situation, like a family room sort of thing. And I have this, this vision in my mind. I remember we would do a gift exchange and everyone would move their chairs out to like the outside perimeter of the room. Mm -hmm. And I just have this vision in my head of being this small child and just looking around this room full of my my aunts and my uncles and my cousins and my parents. And just when I, I, it's a feeling that I have in that space. I know we talked about this on our last episode was I felt in that room now as an adult that I look back on it, I felt love. Yeah. I felt safety. I felt togetherness. I felt hope. Um, you know, that though, you know, life takes you this way and that, and maybe people have different feelings or opinions about this or that, that in that room, in that sacred space on that day, everyone could put all of that aside and could sit together as a family and just be with one another. And I, again, I don't know how old I was at that time, but I can see it like clear as day in my, like I have this memory of standing in the middle of the room and like looking around and just seeing all these people on like, you know, these mismatched chairs and all this sort of thing. And uh, as, as a, as an adult now, I look back at that and I think I want that for my kids. Um, And so I'm really excited, you know, this year. uh, Yeah. I think I talked to you about this earlier in the season that I wanted to like organize a big family Christmas gathering. Mm -hmm. So this holiday season, right after Christmas, a bunch of our family from like Virginia and New Mexico uh, and Georgia are all coming out here to California on um, the 26th, 27th. And we're going to spend like five days together. I've already mapped out like, we're doing dinner at this restaurant this day. And then we're all going to go play mini golf on this day. And I'm just so excited for it, knowing that like my daughter may create a very simple sure she may create a very similar memory to what i just shared you know is that she may think like oh my gosh i remember that year yeah that was really special so anyway that's um that's my number five i love it yeah we're in for it we are in for it. you're only a number five Uh, and you're weeping (laughs) i know uh okay uh my number four is gonna be the christmas uh, the memory that i'm thinking of is probably when i'm like i'm guessing like 14 14, 15 maybe, and that would have made my brother, my little brother Kyle would have been like 12, Mm. or no, uh, he would have been 11, 11. And there was something about, it wasn't our last Christmas that like we lived in that house together, but there's something about like the memory of us as like older slightly older kids a little more self-aware of the world Mm. and but we were like sitting on the steps of our house you know waiting to come down to see what santa got us yeah and just like there was something about us being a little bit older and a little more in the know but Mm. still enjoying that moment if you know what i mean yeah and of just sort of really i i feel like i knew somehow that like a few years later, we would kind of all go to the mm. wind, you know, like yeah. I went off to college and my brother went off to college in California. My parents moved to Florida and we still are very close. But like that time of being in the house that we grew up in was like over. And I, I don't know if I knew it then or it's just something that I think back to now, but there's something that just feels so great and and warm and nostalgic and kind of simple in and, and not like a, it was a simpler time. It was just that it was like streamlined. Mm. Everything was streamlined of just like me and my brother and my mom and my dad. And we just like had so much fun together and and loved, you know, all the sort of things that we would, the bits we would do every year, yeah. you know, of my dad with the camera being like, oh, we didn't get anything this year. I guess we got <laughs> skipped. And then, you know, like things that would be in my parents or our stockings that were like, every year we got Mentos. And it was like, oh, we got Mentos again. And just like all those little bits were great. And especially appreciating them when I was a little bit older and a little bit more 
aware of what was mm. happening. Uh, so that's going to be my number four. It's Christmas when I was about 14. <sighs> Man. Uh, so my number four is, is very similar to yours. Like you shared about um, knowing that like, you know, the years were sort of numbered in terms of like mm-hmm. that that thing that you knew to be your Christmas. Yeah. Um, so mine is uh, Christmas 2010. Um, I went to Disneyland mm-hmm. with my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister. It was just the five of us. Yep. That is the last thing, like big thing that I believe that the five of us did, mm-hmm. like as just the core family. Mm-hmm. You know, there were no boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, fiancés, whatever. Yeah. There at the time, no kids. And there's this great picture that's uh, on the mantle at my parents' house. And actually my my brother's now uh, wife gave that, I think to my parents as a Christmas gift mm-hmm. that year. Cause I'd like posted a photo of us on, you know, Facebook or yeah. something right by the big Christmas tree there on main street. And there's just something special about that moment, you know, knowing that you can do it. Dan. I know you share like all these moments with these people, you know, for so many years and you, you almost don't think it'll ever end. Mm-hmm. And then you have this like special moment that you get to share with them. And it's God, it's uh, I'm not sad, you know, yeah. like I'm, I'm grateful that we had that time at Christmas to make that decision that in the midst of all of our busyness in life at the ages we were at at that time that we said, we're going to go as a family. Yeah. And that we went on rides together and we ate together and we stood there and watched the snow fall on main street together. And that we have that picture. Yeah. You know, I think like pictures have become so disposable, we you take know, so many, we more. take so many yeah. and, that picture in particular just means so much to me because it's like, it's tangible. And that moment, those people <laughs> mean so much to me. So I would say that's uh, that's a really special one for me. It was Christmas 2010 at Disneyland. Nice. Yeah. That's good. And I am sorry to everyone uh, listening for <laughs> uh, what I might be doing to you right now as you're <laughs> sitting out in public yes. you know, crying along uh, with us. All right, uh, my number three is going to be the Christmas in Boston that I Mm. spent with my family. I guess that would have been two years ago. Um, There was something about that particular Christmas that we were renting this house in Boston while I was shooting uh, Kevin Kniff himself. And first of all, I had not spent a ton of time in the Northeast, but like I love Boston. I love Massachusetts and that whole like northeast kind of vibe um so it was great that it was snow everywhere my kids like every day got to play in the snow and have snowball fights and build a snowman and all that stuff we were renting this house that was just this adorable not adorable makes it sound small it was actually a pretty big house but it was like a farmhouse and it was built in the like 1700s so it just had this really really old timey feel to it we i loved that that christmas because we weren't at home we went to uh one of those christmas tree stores you know Mm. the christmas tree stores uh (laughs) and got like so many decorations Mm. that we were like we're just gonna buy like a whole house worth <laughs> of decorations right. and decorate this house that isn't ours because we wanted to do it. And we had so much fun doing that. There was something about like us being just the four of us. There was nobody else that we saw. You know, we went to Florida, but like at Christmas was just such a great, great time. So mm. my number three is going to be uh, the Christmas that I spent in Boston a couple years ago. And special. Very special. Uh so number three for me is going to be uh, last Christmas mm-hmm. uh, and specifically, you know, watching my oldest Emerson uh, starting to get the holiday season mm-hmm. and like the excitement of it, the music, the energy, the the decorations, the traditions of like our Advent, you know, tr- thing that we do where we have these like Mickey Mouse baubles and every morning her and I take one off and we randomize them every year and then we go and hang them up on the tree and it sort of become our thing. But there's one specific memory I have from last Christmas that just like is one of my favorites and, you know, wipes me out is, you know, I've shared before on the show that we do this Christmas Mm sing-along every year at my church that I've been so fortunate to to emcee for however many years in a row. Um, 
but last year, you know, I all the years I would do it prior to last year, I would always see this stage full of children mm-hmm. dancing. You know, like it's a safe space. Like sure. you just let your like yeah. the kids are just playing. Sometimes they're singing. Sometimes yeah. they're dancing. Sometimes they're just oblivious to what's yeah. going on. And I dreamed of the day where I would be in the middle of the room and I would look up on that stage and I would see Emmy mm-hmm. up there. And last year I got that and it was just such a a cool experience to just see her so free and so comfortable yeah. and confident and just being herself. Yeah. Like and just being in the spirit of the holiday and her in her red dress and all the things and Riley was in our life now we had kids and my folks were there it was just like it was such a special experience that memory of just being in that room that room that I grew up in yeah you know that room that I came to age you know came of age in and questioned a lot of things in life in and cried and laughed and all these things that all these years later from 14 year old Danny to you know late 30s Danny now with a family, mm-hmm. uh, it just was like, it really hit. And, but in such a cool way, it was, it was gratitude Yeah, of being like everything that I went through between like the first time I stepped into this building until now, Big wow, journey. Yeah. what a journey. And it, and, and I'm so grateful that it happened the way that it did, because if it didn't, I wouldn't be seeing these people yeah. and feeling what I feel. So, um, that's going to be number three for me is like the Christmas sing along uh, at my church last year. I love that. Um, all right, my number two is going to be a different Christmas in New York, not okay. the one that we did when I was doing Elf, and it was the Christmas of 2016. Mm. Um, I was doing School of Rock at the time, so we had kind of really moved to New York at this point. Yeah. We had this great apartment on 85th Street between Central Park West and Columbus, and we were the ground floor apartment, so we had an actual little backyard. It was like a mm. little patio. Um, and the memory specifically that I'm thinking of is when it first snowed and my little California kids were like, oh my gosh, and they like <laughs> got up and they ran out yeah. and they were just like falling in it and, and making snowmen and <laughs> snowball fights. And like that same Christmas, because the setup of that particular apartment was so odd, we had this very skinny Christmas tree, but it worked really great. And I remember there's a picture of me and Sophie and she's, I'm wearing like a red plaid robe and she's in her like Christmas pajamas and she's standing on my feet and we're like slow dancing to some Christmas music, like in the light of the Christmas tree is one of my most favorite pictures uh, of my life. And there was something about that particular Christmas that just, again, it was just us. We were in New York and that has a certain magical quality to it in general. And it was that, you know, that feeling of, um, oh, you know, there was another part of this. I did a kind of part two. I was like, wait, I think I had a second part of this. And it was this. It was not just playing in the snow in our backyard, but I'm also sort of tucking into this number two memory is sledding in Central Park with both my kids. I have a memory with Miles sledding down. I said we lived at 85th and Central Park West. There was a hill like right at the entrance to the park that was kind of shorter, and I did some just great times with Lisa and and Sophie and Miles just like sledding through the park in New York City just felt so magical. Yeah. And then there was a bigger hill that Sophie and I like jumped over one of the fences to get into. And just that feeling of being totally free, Sophie just loving it. And she talks about that moment all the time Mm. of like, Dad, do you remember when we jumped over that fence and then we were sledding in Central Park and whenever we've gone, even when it's not Christmas time, we know that hill and she'll yeah. point to it and be like, yeah, that's where we went sledding. Oh my gosh. So, the, you know, we had a lot of great memories in that apartment and in that sort of area of Central Park. This is where Sophie learned to ride her bike, wow. you know. It was just like a lot of really core, important memories for our family in New York City and that that Christmas in general. Oh my gosh. Oh the best Mm -hmm. um so number two for me uh i don't i can't put my finger on a year it feels like an amalgamation of years and i've talked a little bit about it before on this show but there's just these memories these glimpses the of, of moments in time of my childhood christmases up through my teenage years of 
being back in my bedroom, hearing the Carpenters Christmas album Mm -hmm. playing in the living room, Um, walking out into the living room and seeing my mom singing along to that album. Um, You know, that album will always hold a special place in my heart because when I hear it, it immediately transports me to every single Christmas season when my mom would pull out that tape or that CD, whatever it was that she was using at that point in time to listen to the Carpenter Christmas album. And, you know, my mom is uh, one of the most important things to me in my life, you know, and and I I just, these precious memories I have of like her. Mm -hmm. And that's one of them for me is just whenever the Carpenter Christmas album came on and my mom was decorating the living room, Christmas was here. Yeah. And it's, it's one of, I couldn't finger, like, couldn't say like 1993 or whatever. It's just, it's all those years. It's all those little slivers of moments of fragments of my life that live in my mind and that feeling that I associate with it. And that feeling is love, you know, that's what it comes back to. So I would say number two for me is just all the years watching my mom decorate our house, listening to the Carpenters Christmas album. I love that. That's great. I'm going to pull an audible here. Okay. And I was going to, I had something different for my number one, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going <laughs> to tag it on to my number two because okay. it was the same year. Okay. And so I'll say that real quick and then I'll give you my number one. Okay. The number two A, we'll call it, was that first Christmas in New York in 2016, we started doing an annual Christmas tree uh, star video is what we call it in our family mm. where we, and it happened just very happenstance. I think I told Sophie, I was like, hey, Sophie, can you like put the phone by the couch and I'm going to light up the star on top of the tree and just like, you know, just tell people what's happening. And, and so we turned it on and there's this video of Sophie is probably, you know, I guess she would have been six or seven at the time. Okay. And Miles is really young. You know, he's only like a year old. And uh, we, I was like standing on a chair and Lisa was handing me like, ornaments and we lit up the tree and Sophie was like sort of coming into her own of like talking to a camera and like, Hey everybody, we're the Petersons and, uh, we're putting up the tree and we like, all were kind of singing carols. And like, at one point the phone like fell over and Sophie was like, Oh my gosh, like had to pick it back up. And miles was shirtless and just running around and (laughs) screaming. And it was like that, that particular feeling of, and we've done it every year since, and that's sort of become a new tradition, but that first one especially was so great. So I'm tagging that on too, okay. because it was that same Christmas. Yeah, totally. And what I'm going to say for number one, though, is you inspired me with the, the talk of your mom. Mm. And my probably my favorite Christmas memory is, uh, I think I talked about it in season one, with the church that I grew up going to, Grace Lutheran Church in Glen Ellen, Illinois, um, we used to do the, you know, we'd sing all the Christmas carols and they'd have, you know, the sermon. And then at the very end of the service, mm-hmm. everybody from the choir, which had been up in the balcony, comes down and we have the candles that then light everybody's candles mm. to sing Silent Night. But as we're walking down to get into position, we sing this song called 10,000 Candles. Right. And it's so beautiful. And the particular memory that I have is when I was old enough to be in the adult choir. And being with my mom, and I remember we both walked down in these blue robes, and my mom was standing right next to me. We were about halfway down, and we kind of lined up with our family who was in the pew. Yeah. So we got to like light the the you know the candles for you know my dad or my uncles or whatever, and you know that being in that church and that sense of Christmas, and especially being with my mom, you know, um, and the music being so important to mm. her and music being so important to me. Um, yeah, the feeling of being um, walking down the aisle to the right-hand side with my mom uh, and singing 10,000 Candles is mm. is my number one oh. Christmas memory. Amazing. Yeah. I can only imagine how your mom is feeling hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Love um, you. Okay. So we're to my number one. And, you know, before we wrap this up, I, I just want to encourage all the listeners out there right now, you know, this is the week of Christmas. We are six days out and I would encourage you 
you know, rather than when we talked about in our last episode, like, you know, that moment of like silent night on Christmas Eve and like how that sort of like triggers this emotion. If, if you're sitting in this space right now, listening to this episode and you're wanting to get nostalgic, you're wanting to think back upon family memories or you're thinking of them, I would encourage everyone to lean into them, but also to call those people mm -hmm. who you share those Huge. memories with. You know, Eric and I on this show, we get to talk and it's recorded and our parents get to listen to this. Sure. Our siblings get to listen to this, but you know, maybe... There's a parent of yours, a sibling of yours, a, a longtime friend, a long lost friend of yours that is tied to one of your most cherished Christmas memories. So I think we would encourage you. Tell people about it. To tell them. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think you can talk about underestimating or I don't yeah. I think I don't think you can overestimate how much that will mean to them. Cause totally. I guarantee if it means something to you, it yeah. means something to them. Yeah. Um so anyway, uh my number one uh is it's two years, but they they don't <laughs> they don't mean anything without each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know. I know I talked about the season one that in 2017, Lynn and I, uh, right before we were going to start IVF, we went to Disneyland, mm -hmm. and you know we met Santa and you know got our picture taken in California Adventure, and you know Santa you know asked us you know what do you want for Christmas mm -hmm. and. Uh, I looked to Santa and I said, we want a baby. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, 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 oh <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, see what I can do, <laughs> you know? And um, and then in 2019, when Emerson was one year old, we we went back to that same exact part in that same exact park and Santa was there and there was just something so special about this thing that you dreamed of and hoped for that you didn't know if you were ever going to have in your life and to know that it came true yeah um it just felt like we were so connected to the spirit of christmas which is love which is hope which is faith mm -hmm. you know and that it may not work out exactly how you wrote it and most of the time it doesn't but that things can work out for you in your life and they and it's so much better than you could ever imagine and mm -hmm. so to go back with emerson in 2019 i was a wreck yeah. You know, sitting in that space, just thinking about all that we went through. Did you through. tell Santa? Did you say, you yeah. did it? You I said, <laughs> you know, we asked for her back in 2017 and here she is. Yeah. Um, it just felt like a Christmas miracle, yeah. you know, and it just, uh, it's very special. And we have pictures from both of those experiences. Like they, whoever was capturing the photos got the moment that I... I think ask Santa because he's like leaning back and sort of like, and I'm like looking at yeah. him and he's laughing. And then we get to go all those years later and Emerson's sitting back, <laughs> back on his lap. And it's just, it's amazing. Super special. And I will hold on to that forever. I love that. Yeah. Well, folks, we hope you're crying <laughs> and we hope that you're enjoying this. Yeah. Um, please send us your favorite family Christmas memories. And yeah. as Danny said, it's so true. Life is so short. You know, I just lost a, a good friend a couple of days ago and I hadn't talked to her in a while, you yeah. know, and it was like kind of a bummer and I was really upset with myself. So, mm -hmm. you know, time is moving quickly. Yeah. So anybody that has had an effect on your life or is a part of your life or was a part of your life, and it meant something to you, like Danny said, reach out to those people. Tell them you love them. This is the time to do it because you have the excuse of saying, it's Christmas and I just <laughs> thought I should reach out. Because I, I get it. It can be hard to reach out to people yeah. in March, you know. But at Christmas time, use the excuse of Christmas to reach out to the people that are important to you. Agreed. Um, but that's going to end it here for Top 5 Christmas <sighs> Memories with yeah. Our Families. And we're going to close it like we do every week by saying, Merry Christmas. And happy holidays. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. See you.